In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a number of tips to help you easily film workout videos without feeling embarrassed, judged, silly, or whatever, and still deliver amazing content for your audience. Let's go. Hey there, my name is Daniel and welcome to another video on Uscreen Health and Fitness where we help you make money with your fitness content online. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to make more money doing what you love with health and fitness, go ahead and start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Today we're gonna to walk through not only how to film workout videos, but how to get great at it and feel good about yourself and your content in the process. If you're a content creator, you've got to get over feeling bashful and embarrassed about filming in public. This is the life you've chosen and it's something we've got to deal with. The more you do it, the more desensitized you'll become to the ridiculousness of it all. Talking to a camera is going to feel silly until you do it enough that it becomes second nature. So just do it, you've gotta start somewhere. I bit the bullet a few years ago and forced myself to film a bunch of videos of just me talking. And then I forced myself to watch my own videos and critique them. It was painful, but it helped me grow exponentially as a communicator. The best part, I only ever posted a tiny fraction of those videos online for people to actually see. For the most part, I was able to improve without too much public embarrassment, although, there was one where I wanted to try out fake crying and I rightfully caught some flack for that one. If you're going to be filming in the gym, then bring along a filming buddy, someone that can operate the camera for you. It'll give you someone to bounce ideas off of, someone to tell you if something sounds or looks weird, someone to help distribute awkwardness and someone to laugh with when things end up a little goofy and weird because they definitely will. If you're going to film at the gym, be sure to get permission first from the management. Once you've got a green light, you'll also want to make sure that you pick a time during off hours to go and film your content. Sure, it's great to have people in the background of the video, but you'd rather have a quiet background so your vocals come through clearly rather than people in the background that are just clanging and banging weights everywhere. This way you're also not competing for equipment that you need. Use your phone or your nice camera. It doesn't really matter because you can get a great image from both pieces of equipment. But what does matter is that people watching your video don't get motion sickness while watching some cheap handheld shaky video. So use a tripod. You've already got a camera in the gym, so don't be shy about stabilizing your image instead of propping your camera up against a protein shaker or some other ridiculous rig. Get a Joby phone tripod or a Gorillapod or a Manfrotto or a SwitchPod, it doesn't matter. Just pick something that'll help you get a stable image unless you've got a friend who knows how to move the camera while keeping it stable and smooth. If you don't have a wireless lavalier microphone to attach to yourself, just go ahead and assume that you're going to need to either record a voiceover for the video or include text instructions on the actual video itself. Sure, if you're in a dedicated studio, there are other audio recording options, but for the everyday guy, that's not realistic. You can try and roll with a Rode VideoMic Pro, just know that it's going to pick up a ton of background noise and your voice might get lost in the mix. After you've considered all these things, be sure to really put together a plan. The last thing you want to do is just go into the gym, wing it, record a few random exercises, and call it a day. It's just not going to work. Plan out the workout and mentally walk through how you're going to film it. In fact, plan like you're working with a one-on-one -on -one personal training client with a specific purpose and goal in mind for the workout. Do the same for how to film it. The advice also applies when you're planning a video series because you'll want a consistent look and feel throughout however many videos you end up with. You'll also want to determine how you're going to shoot. Before you hit record, you need to think about where you're going to post this content or where it's most likely to be consumed. In most cases, horizontal video is what you'll want as that's how most platforms optimize for their videos. But Instagram's making a push for vertical video, especially when it comes to posting on your stories or IGTV. So just make sure that you've thought ahead about where your content is going to go and how you want it to look on each specific platform. You'll also want to think about any potential copyright issues, especially if you're planning to sell these videos. I think in most cases you'll be creating content for social media, but if you're wanting to sell these workout videos, then neutral clothing or brands might be best so as not to give free advertising to any brands or in case any of those brands require special permission for you to use. Something else to consider is that you shouldn't wear clothing that is too light or too dark since you don't have control over the lighting in a gym. There's also the chance that with fluorescent lighting in a commercial gym, you could experience some flickering on the camera. If you start to see any of that, just start playing with the shutter speed to fix that. If you're filming outside, try to film on a cloudy or overcast day. Those types of days provide the best, most consistent lighting for video and photography. If you can't get an overcast day, then aim to shoot as close to sunrise or sunset as possible. Midday lighting is 
awful. There are shadows everywhere, the sun's too bright, and things just look rough. Avoid it if at all possible. Be sure to add your personal touch during post-production. This is really where you can add some flair and you should definitely add your branding and aesthetics to the process. Get some color correction going so the video aesthetic matches whatever visuals you already have. Add a timer graphic to your videos, text instructions, or whatever else to make the video your own and distinguish it from others out there. If you're in need of some inspiration for your content, then click here to watch this video on how to create content when you're feeling stuck. And be sure to hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. So which of the tips in this video do you think will be the most helpful for your next workout video? Let me know in the comments. And to learn more about making money with your fitness content online, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.